In this video, I want to explain what is meant by a two-dimensional probability distribution. And in this case, I'm going to be using a discrete two-dimensional probability distribution. So a two-dimensional probability distribution is an object, a mathematical object, which is used to describe the uncertainty associated with the outcome of two different processes. And those processes may be linked with one another, they may not be linked with one another. It turns out we can use probability distributions to describe both of those potentialities. And because we're dealing with a discrete two-dimensional probability distribution, then each of the sort of outcomes for each one of the processes must be confined to take on a discrete set of potential values. The example that I'm going to use to describe this is a bit of a silly one, but I hope it at least makes the point. And we're going to consider the case where we have two different random variables, one which is, I'm going to call it x here, which is equal to one if an individual goes to the gym and it's equal to zero if they do not go to the gym. Or let's say by going to the gym, I mean regularly going to the gym. And we're going to also consider another random variable y, which is equal to 1 if, let's say, we're considering a, a person who has a girlfriend and it's equal to 0 if that person does not have a girlfriend. And the reason we're using random variables to represent each of these different characteristics is that essentially we're imagining that we are randomly sampling an individual from the population. And before we interview that individual, we don't know if they go to the gym, nor do we know whether or not they have a girlfriend. What we can do is we can set out all the possible outcomes in a matrix now. So we can have x is 0 and x is 1 in our sort of left-hand variables here. And then we have y is 0 and y is 1 up at the top here and we can consider all possible combinations of these two things. So because we're dealing with discrete outcomes, what we can do is we can associate a probability with each of these four possible combinations. Let's say the probability that an individual does not go to the gym and does not have a girlfriend is equal to 0 0.1. Alternatively, if they do go to the gym, and they don't have a girlfriend, then let's imagine that that probability is 0 0.4. And let's imagine now an individual who doesn't go to the gym and does have a girlfriend, let's imagine that probability is 0 0.3. And then the remaining probability when they go to the gym and they have a girlfriend is 0 0.2. So what sort of mathematical function or distribution satisfies the properties that allow it to be called a two-dimensional probability distribution? Well, the first of the conditions is that they're just the same as the univariate example, but now our probability distribution function p is described by, as the sort of outcome of two different things, here x and y. The probabilities that result from that must be always greater than or equal to zero. And we can see that's the case because each of these probabilities are greater than or equal to zero. Just for clarity here, the probability that x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero is equal to 0 0.1. And we could do the same for the other potential outcomes here as well. The second condition, which ensures that what we're dealing with is actually a, a probability distribution, is that the sum over all potential values, now we've got to have two sums because we're dealing with two different random variables. So here we sum from x is 0 to x is 1, and from y is 0 to y is 1, of p of x and y must be equal to 1. What's the intuition behind the second condition? Well, all it's saying is that the outcome that comes from our two different processes must be one of the four outcomes that we've outlined here. By setting the sort of sum over all of these values equal to 1, or ensuring that the sum of all these values is equal to 1, we are explicitly saying that no other outcome is possible. 
And we can see that that's the case here because if I add together the top two, I get 0.4, and then the bottom two, I get 0.6, so I get one overall. 